Java session number three. <clears throat> Okay, today's session plan is we're going to review some if statements from last class. Uh, and we'll also learn about if slash else statements and if, else if, and else statements. <clears throat> okay, so first some review. So last session we ended with a question. Uh, I guess it could technically be called homework, but uh, not really. If you did it, I guess you could just follow along. Okay, so the question was create an integer called number and set it equal to any int value. Write a program that will print the Boolean value true if the variable called number is equal to eight. So uh, I guess I'll give you guys like five minutes to try to do this for the people who didn't. And uh, I guess you could like type in chat if you did the problem or not. If everyone did it, we can just move on. Uh, if you couldn't figure it out, that's fine. We'll go over it in three minutes. Okay, and that should be about enough time. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the answer for anyone who wants to know. So first, uh, it said to create an integer called number. So that's the first line, int, the data type. And we named it number, and we just set it to two, three, four, five uh, for now. It doesn't really matter. And then the if statement, so the purpose of the if statement was to print true if the number is equal to eight. So if parentheses number 
equals eight, then system dot out that print ln true. So uh, remember to have the double equal signs uh, to compare the numbers. So basically, if the variable number equal to eight, in this case, it's not because number is two, three, four, five. Uh, system dot out that print ln true. So it just prints a line that says true. Uh, if this was eight, it would print true. But since this is uh, not equal to eight, then this thing actually prints nothing. So yeah, just, yeah, okay. <clears throat> uh, so next, uh, I'll have you guys attempt this new one. So create a variable called is true and set it to true initially and write a program that prints true if is true is equal to true. And I think this will take about one to two minutes. Okay, and that should be about enough time. <clears throat> so the answer is pretty simple. Boolean, uh, we named it is true is equal to true at first. And if is true, then system dot out dot print line true. So when it's just sorry, if the variable is just in the parentheses like that, and it's a Boolean. Uh, the default Boolean for an if statement is true. So although it doesn't say it, this if statement is actually written as is true equal to true, then print true, which is, is kind of confusing. But it's I guess it's just a cleaner way to just say is true without typing in the two equal signs and then another true. So that's that. <clears throat> The next question might be a bit more complicated with the wording. So you want to buy something from a vending machine, but the vending machine only takes $1 bills. Uh, and $1 in this case will just be 1.00 with 00, 00 decimal. So write a program with a double called money that will print true if there is 1.00 0 stored in the variable money. And I'll give you guys about a minute or two for this as well. Okay, that was a minute. <clears throat> so the answer for this is, so first we create a double called money and we set it equal to 1.00. 0. 
since it's a double, it needs the decimals or else it's an int. And if money equals one not zero zero, then print true. And in this case, it's true because the double is one not zero zero. So essentially it's saying if one not zero zero is equal to one not zero zero, print true. Yeah, that was a pretty simple one as well. <clears throat> Okay, next one, you want to buy a car for exactly $20, but you don't know if you have exactly $20. So write a program that compares an int of 20 to the value of 20 and print true if you have exactly $20 in your account. Uh, so yeah, this wording is a bit confusing, but it's basically asking uh, if 20 equals 20 to print true and create a variable that is equal to 20. And yeah, about one or two minutes for this one as well. All right, that should be about enough time. <clears throat> so the answer is, uh, basically you create a variable and you can either set it to 20 or any other number, but 20 should be the only number that works. So if account amount is equal to 20, then print true. Uh, in this case, account amount is equal to 40. So uh, this condition is not true, so it will print nothing. But yeah, you guys can probably see, start seeing like a pattern. Uh, it's really not that complicated, at least uh, for now. Yeah. <clears throat> and finally, write a program that will print yes if a variable is equal to eight and no otherwise. And keep in mind for this one, you might need more than one if statement. So it might seem pretty simple, but there might be more to it than you think. And this one will take about two minutes as well.
Okay, that's about two minutes. <clears throat> so the answer to this is first you create a variable. Uh, in this case, we set it to eight. So if variable is equal to eight, then print yes. And then we need a second if statement. If variable is not equal to eight, then print no. So we would we need a second if statement because if we don't have the second if statement, then it's only gonna print yes. And if the condition is false, then it's just not gonna print anything. So we need the second if statement. So if variable was like nine, it would go to the first if statement. So if nine equal to eight, then print out yes. And obviously we know that's not true. So it would skip the first if statement and go to the second. And if nine does not equal eight, and that's true, then we print no. And that's that. <clears throat> so a pro tip is if your if statement is just a single line, then you don't need brackets. So for example, if one equals one, so if you want one equals one to print true, then you don't actually need brackets after the if statement. You can just write system.out.println uh, true directly after the if statement. And this is mainly a preference thing, but if you only have like really simple if statements, then there's no need for the brackets, which could get confusing, trying to count like which brackets for what. So yeah, and I, now I'll pass it off to Andrew to talk about else if statements. All right, so with if um, well with else statements, um, you, we're adding another layer of conditions to um, to their program. So another layer of complexity. So the concept of is el of else if statements or if else is simple. If the condition is true, um, then an actual action will be executed and this, the statement's gonna move on. If the condition is not true, which is else, then another action will execute and the statement will move on. We can't hear you if you're talking. Hello. All right, you guys can hear me, right? Oh. Hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna trust Aaron on this and hope that all of you can hear me. All right, so our the formatting for if and else is if, so we have um, our original if that we were going over before, if condition is equal to true, then an action will be executed. And now what we add on top of that is an else statement. So after the if you write else with the curly brackets action. So if you had a variable called like, if you had int x equals five and your if condition was if x doesn't equal five, then obviously the if statement wouldn't run. So the else statement would run. Yeah, we'll see a bunch of this in the next few slides. All right, so we're just gonna do a bunch of um, practice problems. What will this code output? And keep in mind that system.out.println is, is what's gonna output um, the values in these problems. So you have in x equals 26, you're checking if x is equal to 26, um, system.out.println x is equal to 26. And if it's not, then print out um, the statement below. So yeah, this should take like 30 seconds each. I'll just give you some time to think over and write your answers in chat.
yeah, you guys are right. So X. Um, so the, the, the program is going to print uh, x is equal to 26. And I think you can see why. So yeah, here's our answer. Um, yeah, our answer is x is equal to 26. So we have an, an x set it equal to 26. And we're all we're doing is checking if um, x is equal to 26. So 26 is equal to 26. That's true. So the first if statement will run. All right, and here's uh, another one. And we'll take another 30 seconds to a minute for this. Yeah, you guys can write your answers in the chat again. Yep, okay, looks like you guys got it. It'll print um, the difference between X and Y. Oh, actually, um, let's see. Yeah, the difference between X and Y is less than the sum of X and Y. So just tracing through this, we can see we have X equals 10, Y equals 20. So in our first if conditional, we test for if X minus Y is greater than X plus Y. So just thinking about it, we know that x, which is 10, minus y, which is equal to 30, is, um, is, 20, is negative 20. And x, which is 10, plus y, which is 30, is equal to 40. And negative 20 is not greater than 40. So the first if, the, the first if does not execute. So we move on to our else statement, which says, the difference between x and y is less than the sum of x and y. And if we look at our answer, yep, the difference between x and y is less than the sum of x and y. And the explanation is basically what I just said. All right. Um, another question. This one you might have to think about for a little bit, so I'll give you a minute. All right, yep, it'll output hello. So um, let's see, we had tricky equal to false and we were checking if, so the exclamation means not. So we were checking if tricky is not, um, is not true, which is true because tricky is false. So we'll, we'll go print the first if statement, which is hello or yeah. Yep, hello. All right, that one was a little bit tricky. So if you guys have any questions, you can just write it or just unmute and say any questions you have. All right, and we'll move on to the next one.
All right, so I think we're ready to go over this. So if you remember from our last session, or if you're just joining this week, um, the the two, um, if you see in the first if statement, between um, between the two and the hello, you have two little um, straight lines. Those straight lines basically test for, um, they're another conditional operator. So it's checking for if at least one of the conditions is true. So if x plus y is equal to two, then the whole thing is equal to true. If hello is equal to true, then the whole thing is true. So x plus, so x is 53, y is 31. Um, 53 plus 31 is much greater than two is. So you know that you have at least one side of the conditional that is true. And it doesn't matter if hello is true or false at that point, because you already know you have one um, true condition. And you only need one true condition with the, um, with the or operator, or the two straight lines. So it'll print out um, answer one. Yep, this is just explaining it again. And yeah, let's move on. And of course, if you have any questions, you can just stop me at any time. So this time it might look the same, but there's actually a subtle difference in the if statement. So let's see if you guys can get this one.
All right, I think you guys have had enough time to think this over here. So the only difference here was that instead of the two straight lines or the or conditional, like the last question, we have two ampersands or the funny looking squiggly things, um, which is the and conditional. So unlike the or conditional, which only checks if one of the conditions is true, the, um, the and operator checks if both conditions are true. So in this case, both x plus y is greater than two has to be true and hello has to be true. So when we check for that, um, is x plus y greater than two? Well, then yes, it is as we found out last time. And is hello equal to true? And that's, it's not true because hello is equal to false. So since both of the conditionals aren't equal to true, the whole thing actually turns into false. So the if statement is not satisfied. So answer one won't be printed. And we move on to the else statement because there's nothing else to test. And we end up printing um, answer two. And yep, there's our answer and explanation. All right, moving on to, um, we're going to add another layer of complexity, and this is the else if statement um, in combination with the if and else statements. So, yeah, it, the else if statement is basically just adding another if statement to your, um, to the block of code, or yeah, to that, linked along with that first if statement and it'll test a condition just as a regular if statement would. Um, something to note is that it must come after the if statement. So you can't just have an else if by itself. It has to be um, an if statement has to come before it. And you should also remember that if any of the conditions are true in the block, if the, in the in if block, then none of the others will run. So yeah, none of the others will um, be checked and therefore will not run. So the formatting or syntax of the if, else, if, and else statement is if condition is equal to true, you do your action. If, if, you're, if that first if statement is found to be true, then the rest of it isn't run. Only the action of the first if statement is run. So for your where you then you have your else if and that also checks if condition is equal to true and does it and executes an action if it's found to be true and then you have your else which if nothing else is found to be true then it runs that certain action and something else to note is that you can have as many else if statements as you want in there so you can have this if and then else if like 50 times and it would be valid, but it's also very inefficient programming if you have that many else if statements. All right, so we're gonna do a few more questions. Um, what will this code output? And yeah, keep in mind the thing I said before about if one um, if condition is executes, then the rest won't be checked and will therefore not be executed.
Oh yeah, looks like you guys got it. Hello two will be printed. So uh, we can just see here. Since x is equal to five, or wait. Oh, actually, um, the wrong answer is posted here. So just ignore that. We'll just go back a slide. So we see that x is equal to five, y is equal to 10. And we test that if, if x is equal to six, then we print out hello one. We know that x is equal to five, so that's obviously not true. So we move on to our next if or our else if. And that checks for if x is equal to five. And yeah, we see above in our um, in our declaration that that an x is equal to five, so five is equal to five, so we print out hello two. All right, and here is another one with a slight difference. All right, so our answer for this is hello one. And so we see that x is equal, well, we have the same variables, variables again, x is equal to five, y is equal to 10. But this time in our first condition, if our, in our first if statement, we check if x is not equal to six, which is true, five is not equal to six. So we print out hello one. But you see in the um, next else if it checks if x is equal to five, and that's also true. Um, five is equal to five. So you'd expect um, hello two to be printed. But um, recall what I said before about the execution of these statements, that if the first, if um, one of them is already executed and it comes before it, then it'll just exit the whole um, the whole block of the if statement. So in this case, only hello one would be printed. And yep, that's basically what I just said. All right, I think this is one of the last ones. So it just take a few minutes to do this, and we'll go over it.
All right, looks like you guys all got it this time. So, yep, Hello3 is going to be the one printed this time. So we have, um, as with the last two questions, x is equal to 5 and y equal to 10. In our first if, in our first if statement, we check if y is equal to 6. So is 10 equal to 6? And that is false. So hello1 does not print. We move on to our else if. We check if x is equal to 3. Well, 5 isn't equal to 3, so that's false again. Hello2 is not printed. And since none of these have resulted in true so far, we move on to our else, state, our else statement. And hello3 is printed. So yeah, good job. Everyone got that one. Oh, uh, looks like that was our last question. So I actually have a, um, a demonstration for all of these questions on REPL. And I'm going to stop screen sharing, and in a few moments, I will be sharing REPL. And after that, we'll be done. So you guys can all see Replit right now, right? We have our editor open. Just give like a thumbs up or say, yeah, we can see it. All right, cool. So what I've written here is all of the questions that we've gone over so far with our, um, so we have a section for our if and else statements, and we have a section for our if and else if and else statements. So we could just uncomment these so that the code will actually run. And we can see what they actually output and see if they line up with what we predicted before. Oh yeah, we're actually getting some errors here. We can, start, we can just debug and see what went wrong. Uh, yeah, sorry, I muted for a second to fix that. Um, it was probably a forwarding, uh, formatting issue with the characters, but we've got it working now. So we can see this prints out x is equal to 26, as you guys all predicted before. And it looks like I might actually have to change a bunch of these up since they're all um, giving errors right now, which is kind of weird. Uh, looks like it's something wrong with the quotation marks. So we can comment this one out and see what this gives us. And as you guys predicted before, 
it will write the difference between x and y is less than the sum of x and y. Yep, you can see that hold, still holds true here. So now you guys see how this works. So I'm just going to uncomment the rest of these, and we can print them all at once. All right, and we should be good. Sorry about that. All of our errors should be fixed at this point. Oh, actually, we're going to have some errors here because we're, we are creating the variable twice. So we can just delete these. And x will still be 53, and y will still be 31 in the rest of these cases. As for these, which still share the name of x and y, we can just quickly fix this by making them doubles instead of ints. Or actually, no, they still share the same name. So we'll just call this one w, we'll call it z. Uh, Andrew, I think you could also just um, like get rid of the uh, integer assignment in front. You could just reassign x and y. As like as a double, right? No, you could just reassign x equals five. You don't need the oh, integer. Right. Yeah. Okay, I completely missed that. Okay, kind of dumb. Yeah, Eric is all right. Let's get rid of that. And yeah, we should be good to run it now. Or not. Looks like we're still reassigning it somewhere. Or oh, okay, here I just missed that. So here are the rest of our answers. We have hello for this one, answer one for this, answer two for this one, hello two for this, hello one for this, and hello three for our last question. And yeah, that's it. This wasn't really um, a test for like, you know, to see if you guys knew it or not. This is just to show um, what happens when you actually print it. But yeah, that's about it for today, I think. Sorry if this was a boring class, but hopefully you guys understand um, if statements and else if and else statements. And yep, I think we're going to end it here. If you guys have any questions, you can just stay after and ask. And if not, you guys are free to go.